بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسلمين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in humanity, you get with the same greetings of all the prophets from the time of Adam until the time of Moses and Jesus and finally Muhammad upon them be peace. And you say unto you all the same universal greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, perfect peace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon each and every one of you. Well, al-hayyul qayyum. The ever living God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity. So let us all thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be among the living ones after this time and we'll also make use of it before our time is up. Well, today we are going to discuss because last time you we were talking about how Prophet Wasallam was praying and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent some genes to come and listen to him, but our time was so short, so he couldn't reach anywhere. Okay. So today, inshallah, ta'ala, you are going to hear exactly what happened during that particular time. So what's happened? Let's go ahead. Oh, Muhammad, say Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul, uhiya ilayya. Yes. It has been revealed to me that a group from three to ten in number of jinns lis listened to this Quran. Listen to the Quran. It's a kun uhiya ilayya and nahu stama'a nafarun min al jinn. He said, tell the people, look, subhanAllah, those Meccans, they do not want to listen to the Holy Quran, they don't want to listen to this and so forth. He said, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent a group of jinns. If you do not want to listen to it, these people, they are ready to listen to it. And they came, they listened to the Holy Quran. And they said, what did they say? They said, verily, we have heard a wonderful recital, this Quran. He said, he said we have heard, but it's a wonderful Quran. This is most important. Wonderful. Ajaba. What kind of wonders the Quran has? Let's see what it says. This wonders that Allah has given to us here. What did he say? The next ayah. It guides to the right path. Yeah, that is. This is the wonders of the whole Quran. Yahdi ila rushd. It guides people to the right path. So this is the deen that we are following. This is the deen that we are following. And therefore, what did they say? And we have believed therein. Yes. You see? It means when a Muslim, you hear something which is good, do not hesitate. Do not make, oh, you know, but, you know, but no. Straight away, it says, That means, straight away, we believe in it. We believe in the whole Quran straight away. We did not have any kind of thinking here and there. All oh, oh, you have been this and that. How are you going to change our culture? This no. So straight away, we believe in that Quran, and hence, what are we going to do? And we shall never join in worship anything other than our Lord Allah. That's it. <laughs> And you should never ever think of making partners to our Lord at all. Finish. So now the jinns, they listen to the whole Quran. They believe in a such a way. They do not have any kind of bad, bad problem. No. They believe straight away. But he said this whole Quran, Yahdi ila rushd, it guides man to what is upright, what is right. So, what is right that this deen gives us to us? For example, deenun tasbihatun tamhu zunub. This deen, you make a lot of tasbih, zikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then it takes a wipe of your sins for you. And then salat ila salat, ukafarat bil khataya. You perform one salat to the next salat between them. It also takes out your shortcomings, your mistakes that you have made. 
Not only that, fuck at, look, look at, imagine, Shaku Tamura, you have just a half of a date to open it, and you have a half of it, and you give it to someone else. Professor Allah said that even protect you from the hellfire. Allah Akbar, subhanallah. Not one that. Was sadaqah to not feel God of Arab. The sadaqah that you make, the charity, it also extinguishes the anger of your Lord. Ya salam, ya salam. Well, Quran, yeshraun the ashabihi. The Quran also, Yom al Qiyamah, is going to intercede on behalf of those who practice the Holy Quran, put it into practice. You read it and so forth. What kalimat? Yes, fakat kalimatan. The two words. Subhanallah, obihamdihi, subhanallah al azim. This in without kilmizan al amal. It makes your deeds on the scale for you, Yom al Qiyamah, become very heavy. Just say subhanallah, obihamdihi, subhanallah al azim. As very light as being beloved. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it makes also the scale of your deeds become very heavy for you, Yom al Qiyamah. What more as you want? Wa wudu yazil min al jawarah maktarafat. When you make your wudu also, it takes away the sins that that particular part has made, whether it's the hand or the face or wherever it is, here. Anyway, subhanallah. Wa hasatat al da'af. The ashir al da'af. Ila sabu amiyat al da'af. Subhanallah. You make one. One good deed. It's been written for you 10 rewards. And then it's multiplied to 700. Then to 7,000 and so on and so forth. And then Allah said, al da'af al da'af. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot for you. Or Rasul Yeshra. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yom Al Qiyamah, is going to intercede on our behalf. Or Malik, yes, talk for And Malaika, they are seeking forgiveness for us. Even those who are holding the, the throne of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they are seeking forgiveness for us. Or Rabbu Rahim, and our Lord is so merciful. Yes, Salam. What more else do you want? You have any problem? Of being a Muslim, you should be very, very, very happy to be a Muslim, brother or sister. So here you are. We must make sure we do things which are good. So when Professor Allah Alaihi Wasallam came, and then he came to uh, what's called to Mecca, he was there from Taif. He came to Mecca and so forth. He was able to get into uh, some kind of refuge with someone. Okay, to seek protection. And at the end, Allah is telling him, look, Muhammad wasalam, you have to proclaim the message publicly to the people. Proclaim it publicly to the people. It's a very difficult thing, but you have to do it. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has to do it. And then when this thing was done, where is he going to have a place by that time, also, his wife, Radiallahu Anha, Khadija Radiallahu Anha, had passed away. The uncle who used to take care of him and protect him during that time from discourage, atrocities, and so forth, also had passed away. So it was very, very difficult for Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam, who is going to, and which place is he going to have his center where he can propagate the deed? So it, is very, it was very difficult for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of all that, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he chose one young man whose name was Arkham. Din Arkham. Arkham, he was a young man. By that time, he was about 18 or so years old. He was very young and his father's house, because it was just by the sofa. 
that are time by suffer child. Okay? And then you have a lot of people around that side. So Prophet Wasallam, he chose that house to be the hiding place to go and give the dawa to the people who had accepted Islam to teach them secretly. Somebody will say that, why that Rasulullah Wasallam did not choose those elders, like Umar's place or Hamza's place and so forth? No, because he did not want to have attention. If he's going to Hamza's place, then so the Quraysh will know that, hey, this person is going to this particular place because they are big elders and so on and so forth. But when he chose this young man, this house, nobody thinks that Rasulullah Sallallahu will go to, the, because this young man cannot protect himself from these Quraysh people, let alone protecting Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi So they didn't think at all that at that place also it was good because it was by the sofa side. So during that time, you have a lot of people around that side. So when the Muslims and everybody is moving all around, they just slip and go to the, that house that nobody can even notice anything because there were a lot of crowd people around that side and so forth. And not only that, it was a very narrow place that you have to go in a zigzag way before you get to the house. So it was not something people can uh, think about it. Well, Rasulullah Sallam gave this one to that. So it does itself, it is enough. Look at that young man. He was the only one when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, he bought a house for him. Why? Because one good turn deserves another. He was the one who offered his house, his father's house, for the propagation of the deen during that time in Mecca. So this is that's what is known as al wafa Okay? And hence the reason I said four people, you should not forget them in your life. Four people. The two... The first two are your parents, your mom and your dad. You should not forget them in your, in your life. Because through them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you into this world. So you should never forget them. You should be very kind, so forth, to your mom and so on and so forth, all the time. Don't shout, don't scream at them. Don't go outside them. You become nice with your friends and so forth. But when you come home, you become like a tiger with your mom, especially the moms and so forth, shouting and screaming at them. No, never do that. It's a curse if you do something like that. And the third one is the first teacher who taught you how to read and write. How to read and write. Never forget that particular teacher in your life. Always pray for, for him. Always make dua for them as you make dua for your parents. Make dua for that particular teacher also. And the fourth one, the one who helped you at the time of in need, as the time that you will really need the first person to help you, you should never forget that person. Be grateful to that particular person all the time. And hence, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, do what? He said, compensate that particular person. If you don't have anything to compensate that particular individual, still, what did he say? He said, make dua for that person all the time. Every time you make dua for yourself, for your parents and so forth, make dua for that person to show gratefulness. That's al wafa But unfortunately, do you do that? Whenever we get our place, you forgot. And as if sometimes even the person becomes even enemy to that particular individual. So the fact remains here that Arkham, he was a young man, very young man, but he was very humble. Very, very humble person. He was a very humble person. Okay. So our youth should take example of this particular person. 
how he was so humble, so kind, and so forth. Therefore, it is our duty to guide our youth to the right path. We, first of all, we have to put them into education, encourage them to be educated. Yeah, even if they cannot do, somebody say, oh, I don't have brain, my brain cannot take science and math and so forth. You have vocational distance. Let them use their hands. They can become plumbers, electricians, and all kinds of these things. Or painters. All these things are very, very important. They can become that. Okay? And then you have to inform them about the danger of terrorism. The danger of that. So that they will not be part of that. Okay? People brainwashing others and so forth. Misinterpreting the whole Quran according to their own whims and fancies. Okay? You should also warn them about the danger about that, so that they will not affiliate themselves into this one or that one. And you should also let them have knowledge about law-abiding citizens. They must be law-abiding citizens, okay? So you have the respect for the people, the country that you, you live in, you, okay? You abide by the laws, the rules, and so forth, so that you will bring peace and harmony, okay, among the people who are surrounding you, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. You have to have a lot of respect. You have a lot of respect for others. Respect people. Okay. Especially the elders and so on and so forth. Respect them. Your neighbors, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, have a respect for them. Then have equality without discrimination about people and so forth because of their color or their language or their... Uh, what's called nationalities and so forth, okay, or the agendas. No, no, you have respect for people because we are all humankind, okay? So as a mankind, you have to show kindness to other people. And you have to have mannerism. You have to show them how to be very good in their behavior, not to swear, not to do all kinds of these patterns that uh, is, is going on, okay? or to participate themselves with bad individuals, as nowadays you can see it. Violence, take them away from that, all that kind of violence that people have in support, the children are going on. Nowadays, you can see them. You have to tell them about the dangers of drugs, dealing with the drugs and then stabbing. Young, young ones, stabbing, killing. SubhanAllah, when, when, when I see it, sometimes I cry. Some of them are about 12 years, 13 years, 14 years. That he hasn't even started life yet. And he's been stabbed to death by his own age group. Why? You have to tell them about the dangers of these things and so forth and how bad it is going on with the people, okay? That they should stop this. this. You should make them become more busy also with uh, sports activities because. When they become busy with that, they will have less time to roam about to look for troubles. Okay? You should also encourage them about this type of things because Rasulullah uh, he too, he used to do sports even with, with his own wife. Aisha Anha. Okay? So it is something good. Encourage them also to do this kind of things and so forth. Which it will help our youth. Okay? You take example from Arkham, young man, and Rasulullah chose his house to be the center for the dawah. Imagine, huh? Why? If he was bad, you think that Rasulullah would choose that house? No, he would never do that. Rasulullah would never have done that. But he was very good, polite, kind, humble. So you should humble ourselves and be law-abiding citizens and have a respect for others. No, don't go and involve yourselves into any kind of bad things that people are having and so forth, gangs and so forth. No. The professor has said, Allah will give you al gender. Hmm? Young youth who is being brought up, you grow up in the deen, Grow up in the deed. Allah will give you a gender. It's good for you. 
Hmm? It's good for you. And the Jannah. Do not go here and there doing all kinds of bad stuff and so forth. No. Don't you want Ali Jannah? You want Ali Jannah? Start. Start from there. Okay. So we are asking these children to make sure that you do something which is good. That will benefit you and benefit your community. It will benefit you, benefit your community, your family members and so on and so forth. You will all become happy with you. Yeah? Don't you want to be like this young man, Arkham? Hmm? Until even when they came to Medina, even has to buy a house for him. Allah Akbar, subhanAllah. Ya Salam. Ya Salam. Let us try our best to do something which is good. Allah is going to, you as a youth, Allah is going to put you under his shade. If Allah puts you under his shade, the day that there's no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where are you going to? You're going to Al Jannah. So Allah will give you Al Jannah. It is there. Why is that you don't want to do this kind of things? Instead of forming or joining the groups, gangs, and so on and so forth, it is something which is very, very bad. And you should not make ourselves involved in this kind of things. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the most important things that you should have. Okay? Now, Meccans, they were talking about how come that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this thing has to be revealed unto him, unto Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Young man who was an orphan, who hasn't got anything and so forth, who was taking care of their sheep and all kinds of things. How can it be? So what did they say? When you go to Surah 43, verse 31, hear what these people used to say. Okay? Hear what they say regarding this. What did they say? No. And they say... Yeah. That what? is what these people say. Waqalu and they say. Uh -huh. Why is not this Quran sent down to some great man of two towns? Good. Say, no, 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 like uh, Walid bin Mughira, and then also, for example, Urwa bin Mas'ud of Thaqif, the Taif and other things, and so on and so forth, or Ibn Abdu Yalel in Taif. Where is that? These great, great people, they did not have the Quran being sent unto them instead of Muhammad. But who decides? Am I the one who's going to decide? Or you are the one who's going to decide? Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is going to decide? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decides, not me and you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who chooses, not me. Neither you also. I don't choose. Neither can you also choose. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chooses. That's why in Surah 7, Ayah 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, what? what did Allah say? In Surah Al-Araf, chapter 7, verse 144. What did Allah say? Mm -hmm. Okay? So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who chooses. He chooses, but not me and you. We have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Allah said, O oh, Musa. O oh, Musa, yeah, Musa, O oh, Musa. Mm -hmm. I have chosen you above men by my messages. Yes. In the My messages that I have given them to you, I have chosen you 
So nobody can say that, why well, didn't choose this one, that one. No, they don't have that authority. It is I who have that authority. I am the one who knows. So I have chosen you. Yes, with my message. And also, what? And by my speaking to you. Yes, sir. And by my speaking to you also. Directly, without anybody coming in between us. SubhanAllah. You hear me talking? And I also, I hear you talking. SubhanAllah. Allah Akbar. What kind of honor a person can have speaking directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hearing the voice of Allah. Ya Allah, let us hear your voice. Be among those who will see you in Jannah al Firdaus. Ya Arhamar Rahimin. Everybody say Amin. Amin. Yes, go on. So hold that which I have given you and be of the grateful. That's it. You say, for khuzma ataytuk. Whatever I have given to you, keep hold of that. Wakun min shakirin and be among those people who are grateful. How many of us, this last statement, read the last statement again. Therefore, do what? So hold that which I have given you. That is one. One I have given to you. And the second one? And be of the grateful. And be of among those grateful people. How many people you have been satisfied with what Allah has given to us? How many of us? And how many of us are also grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You tell me. How many of us? These two things. Hmm? A poor person will be crying and so forth. Oh, I don't have this. I have this and that and so forth. The crying. And even though he has some other things and so forth. And then the richest person also will be crying. Why? Because he had been uh, prohibited from eating some things. You can eat this. You can eat that. You can do this. You can do that. He may have his even private jets. You tell him, doctor said, because of your heart, you cannot fly. Right? Otherwise, you are going to get heart attack. Look, the first one is not satisfied, and the second one also is not satisfied. Okay? So this is how the world is going. That's how the world is going. So you must be very, very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever Allah has given to us. And when these messages were going on, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling them what he's supposed to do and so forth because now he has to come out and tell the people. Yes, sir, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have heard you. But tell us about the God that you are talking about, that you want us to live about 360 God that we worship, all those gods that you worship. You want us to take only one, and that one is not from what we have, from what you yourself you have chosen. Who is that God that you are talking about? Describe him. Is he... A mountain or an iron or uh, like a liquid, like a water or what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajeem, bismillahi rahman rahim He sent Jibreel to bring it to him. He said, give them the description of your Lord. Yes. All tell them that who are the one that the God that they are, they are asking you about to describe him to you uh, to them. Tell them that his name is Allah. His name is Allah. And that Allah is Ahad. He is the only one. There is no partners with him. He has no wife. He has no children. But he is by himself. The creator of all. al Hayyul Qayyum. He is the ever-living God. Oh. You say, okay. 
And then he said, tell them that Allahu Samad. That Allah is to him, everybody takes all his problems and everything to Everybody. Whether they believe in him or they do not believe in him or whatever, and he provides for everything and everybody. His mercy encompasses everything. Then he said, Lem yelid, well, lem you let. Lem yelid, well, lem you let. He did not give birth to anybody. Nor was he been also given birth by anybody. Allah Akbar. Subhanallah. Ya Allah. Subhanaka ya Rabbi. Walam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. And therefore, there is no one that you can compare with him who has this kind of, of qualities. Who? Nobody has that kind of qualities in the world. Nobody has that kind of qualities. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, here you can see uh, there has been so many uh, distance here. He hasn't got anybody. Everybody goes to him. So it is only him that we have to worship and nobody else. He became very, very astonished. He said, that is the reason why we cannot see him in this world. Because you don't have that kind of sight. Our sight cannot behold him. No. Because even what he has created, or the Shams, the sun, when it is very, very high, especially when you are back home like that, when it's about 12 o'clock midday, you can look up just like that. No. As if you are going to get blind. And what about he himself? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And he's not telling you to do anything bad. He's telling you to do something which is good. You can speak, but you are Distance, you cannot. You say, but you can see them. You say, yeah, you can see them. But can they speak to you? They cannot speak to you. You see them as stones. You see them as uh, what is called uh, maybe woods and so on and so forth. That is there. You, they cannot help you to do anything. And you cannot is, even do anything for them. You give them food, they cannot eat. You give them drink, they cannot drink. So, what is the problem? That you do not want to worship the one and the only one who will give you everything that you need. Everything that you need. And any time that you have anything, you hold, who do you call? When you have a problem, you have anything, who are you going to call? So Allah, oh God, oh God, you see him. Where his name is the only thing that comes to your mind. Where is the only thing that comes into your heart? So they say, so what is he calling us to? To come to do what? Then Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, when you go to Surah 6, I am 151. Surah An'am. Hear what is calling me and you to do. Say, O oh Muhammad. Say, say, Qul. Say, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Yeah. Say, Ta'alu atul maharrama rabbukum alayhi. Come, come along. You want to know what uh, my Lord had said and so forth. What is coming to tell us? Okay. Here. Come and hear what he's telling us not to do. Yeah. Join not anything in worship with him. That is the first one. Allah to shirku bihi shay'a. 
that you do not set any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. No, not anything in his names and his edit and so forth, his archives, nothing. You do not set any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, don't put tamaim, amulets around your hands or your neck or your waist or putting them in front of your houses or under your pillows and all kinds of these things. No. Don't make partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in anything because he is only one. And he said, he is Allah who summoned anything that you need and so forth, go send it to him and he will take care for you. For she said, Uman ala Allah for who are hasbu. Whosoever puts his trust upon Allah, Allah is what? He is sufficient for that person. He suffices that person. Once you put your trust upon him, he will also do it for you. So this is one thing you have to do. Yes. Be good and dutiful to your parents. Good and dutiful to your parents. That, subhanallah. Be dutiful to your parents. Be very kind to your parents. Everything. This, but so many times, this is what we do not want to do. Allah emphasized, He said, Ihsana, any kind of good, any kind of things that will make them become happy and so forth. Do that. Especially you, young ones. The young ones, you have no respect for your parents. Do whatever you want to do and so forth. No. If Arkham was if he was like that, the Sussalam wouldn't have chosen his house to be the center for the first school of Islam. The Sussalam wouldn't have chosen him. He was good. Arkham. His father was an Arkham also. SubhanAllah. He <laughs> have to. <laughs> okay. And the mother was Umama bin to Harith. Umama bin to Harith. Okay. He was very good. And hence Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi chose his house. So you, as young ones, be very, very kind to your parents. Take him to be the role model also for you. As a young person, obeying his parents and so forth. You also do the same thing. Yes. What is the next thing? Kill not your children because of poverty. Yeah. Do not kill your children because of poverty. Don't do that. Why, oh Allah? That Allah is giving you the reason why you shouldn't do that. What did Allah say? We provide sustenance for you and for them. Ah. Look, you say, even you yourself, it is I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who provides for you. And hence, I will also provide for, for them. Now, Abortion, they are making it legalized. If you tune into your uh, TV and so forth, yeah, you're fighting for it now. Okay? You have it. So, why is that you do not want to have something very good as believers? And I say, don't kill your children because of poverty. Because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who provides for me and you. And hence, those children also who are coming, Allah also will provide for them. Put your trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take the means. Take asbab. And be isn't Allah ta'ala. Allah said, وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْسُ لَا يَحْتَسُبُ 
He will provide for you from where you do not even think of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you in this. So, you should be very, very kind to our parents. That's the first one. The first one, no shirk. The second, be kind to your parents. Speak to them very nicely, a beautiful way, and so forth. Okay? If you have done something wrong to them, go to them in a very humble way. Mom or dad, I'm sorry for what I did to you. Please forgive me and so and so forth. Show kindness. Do, so, do something. Put smile on their faces as you put tears on their faces. Wipe it with smile and showing kindness to them. Yes. And hence, we have to show kindness also to one another. We have to have the same. You forgive others, you pardon others, and so forth. As uh, this one was saying, Ahnaf bun Qais. Ahnaf bun Qais, he said, Iyakum wa rahil awgad. He said, be careful of miserable and wretched ideas. So they said, oh, <laughs> what are those wretched ideas? Those people who see that to pardon someone or to forgive someone, they find that as a shameful thing to do. They said, be very careful. Do not be among them. Do not be among them. So if you have done something wrong to your parents and so forth, go to them. Mom or dad, please forgive me. But I did this and so on and so forth. And they replenish it with good deeds. Let them see that action. Practical way. Do it practically so that they can see it. In the morning, you prepare uh, maybe breakfast and go and give it to them. Even when they are on the bed and so forth, go and give it to them. Let them feel happy. Okay? Let them feel happy. When they speak to you, do not make your face like, like a cuckoo face. Mm. Oh, it's a, ah. They speak to you, be very happy. Because when they are pleased with you, Allah also is pleased with you. Allah also is pleased with you. Therefore, you should take that advantage before it is too late. You do not know the importance of having your parents until or unless when they go. That's the time you get to know the importance of them. Because they are the doors of al -Janda. And at the same time, they can become doors of hell also for an individual. It may depend how you treat your door. The door, if you treat it properly, it will become nice and so forth. If you go and you always, you are kicking it. You are kicking it, you are kicking it. It will break. But if you go and you open it very gently all the time and you close it gently also, you see it, it will be there for years. So your parents like that. They become the two doors for you, for Jannah. For you to go to Jannah. So treat them very kindly, very nicely, and feel very good. So that you get peace and harmony inside of you. You get the peace inside of you all the time. SubhanAllah. Don't you want that? To have that kind of peace inside of you? Hmm? It is so nice. That's why it says peace. Peaceful. Okay? You do that one, it brings you peace. If you don't do it, it puts you into pieces. And when it puts you into pieces, don't bring it to me to piece them together for you because I'm not the one who did it. So you have to make sure that you do it for your own self. 
and for your own sake, for your future, for the hereafter. In the salat that you are performing, perform it as if that's your last salat you are performing in this world. You see one video, an imam performing salat, reading, and what happened? He just collapsed, finished. Medical mouth came to him and said, you have performed the salat that you are supposed to perform. How many times, how many that you have, it has finished now. This one, you cannot read it so far. SubhanAllah. He was taken. Medical Mo did not say that, oh, he is doing something good, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let me wait for him until when he finishes and says, Salaamu Alaikum, then I go. No. When the Ajal comes, the time comes, there is nothing that is good. So be very aware and beware of what is known as sudden death. Because nowadays it has become rampant. It has become rampant. People just go and so forth, they just fall down. That is it. It's gone. You just sitting there, oh, I cry myself. That is it. And he was gone. So every salat that you are performing, perform it as if that's your last salat you are performing. And you will not get another salat again. How many people perform salat al asr? And now they are no more la. They have gone. Maghrib did not come to them. What about me and you? We are not even sure if Maghrib will come to us. So everything you are doing, do it with perfection. Do it perfectly. So that if your time comes or my time comes during that time, Allah will be pleased with us. Because that will be the last thing or the first thing you will be questioned, you may be raised up on Yom al Qiyamah. What you did. What you did. The last thing that you did. And the alim told someone, he said, let it tell them, do not speak. He said, what? Kaif, how come that I should not speak? He said, you want to speak? He said, yes, I have to speak. He said, then, started, and let it them, but let it tell them, illa bi khair. If you want to speak, don't speak anything except something which is good. Because your life will be taken during that time. And that is the thing that, or the last thing that you said, if it is not something good. As the Susu Asamak has said, and can I only be lie on Yomil Akhim, fell Yakul Khairan, oh, yes. Whosoever believes in Allah, that Allah knows what he or she is saying or doing and so on and so forth, and is going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he believes in the hereafter that will be accountable for whatever thing he or she will be saying, because it, everything will be recorded. Everything will be recorded and videoed. Yani Rasulullah said, let him say something good or seal his mouth quiet. If you don't have anything good, say, say whosoever becomes quiet, you have become successful. Yeah. Because you will not say something bad. Okay. Why well, don't want to be with Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, when you mention him, Hmm? He also mentions you, Allah. Why you don't want to do that one zikr? Where you become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do the zikr. Okay? This kind of ma'iyya, that Allah will be with you all the time when you make the zikr. You say it inside of you, Allah will remember you inside of me. You say it loud, you also 
mention it to the people or, or the creations over there, which is much more better than the place where you said whatever thing you have said, good things. So brothers and sisters, I, oh, our time is up now. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right, all right, okay. So coming to the end of the program, the Isinlahi Ta'ala, today you cannot have any kind of quiz because our time is up. Maghrib time is just right the corner now. And it's locking our doors. Okay. Let us all have this thing in our mind. One, do not commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, be kind to your parents. Be very, very kind to your parents. And thirdly, the youth, you should be on the right track. Be in the good companies all the time. And have a respect. And do not join any gangsters and all of it, so on and so forth. Get away from this stabbing and killing and the drugs and so forth. It does not worth it. You are still young. Take Arkham as an example. So, brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we are still alive up to this time. Allah Akbar. Okay, coming to the end, may Allah bless all of you. And you pray that you may meet with Allah Ta'ala next time, inshallah Ta'ala, if you may be still alive up to that time. Mm. But in this case, Allah takes our lives. Don't forget to pray for all those who have gone to the grave beyond. May Allah forgive all of them. May Allah mm. give them uh, all the graves become and may Allah make all of us be in Jannah to the those with our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa where you can see ourselves and we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us among those people who will be crossing the surat as Amen. if in the blink of an eye. Amen. Yeah, alhamdulillah rahimin. And may Allah make our ending to be the best ending. Yeah, alhamdulillah rahimin. Until Amen. then, subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Nastaghfiru wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu ala Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.